Hello people. In this occasion we're going to have a look at how to boot a Linux system without grub or without an edit RAMFS. Maybe I should at one point explain what grub is and what init RAMFS is, but oh. um, grub is the obviously the bootloader of our Linux system and that was necessary when our firmware was, uh, wasn't really smart enough to load a kernel from a file system. But nowadays we have a thing called UFI, which is smart enough to load a kernel from the file system, only it can only do it in P32 plus format, which is a Windows Microsoft thing. Uh, it really sucks, but the Linux people were smart enough to come up with a stop that faked being a P32 executable to the EFI firmware. And I think it is enabled by default uh, with a compiled kernel. So we don't, have, we don't really have to do anything apart from copying the kernel to the ESP, the, um, the um, UFI system partition, where the EFI F applications are. And for the initRFS, the initRFS is a little compressed file system that gets copied into memory that the kernel then mounts as root and it can look for kernel modules in there necessary for bootstrapping the rest of the system. But uh, the initRFS really only needs to have the file system drivers, uh, ext4 for, exam for, for example, and the whatever storage driver it needs to load the uh, file system from the drive. In my case, I'm on NVMe. So I really only need ext4 and the NVMe driver to load the rest of the kernel modules and bootstrapping the rest of the system. I don't know why uh, this is the default behavior, having a need from FS. It adds seconds to boot time and it it's really only for saving a few kernel modules from being crushed into the kernel. I guess maybe it's done f because in this way you can have many kernel modules in the init RFS that don't need to be encrusted on the kernel itself. Uh, maybe for generalization to make it bootable in many systems, but when you install the system maybe to get a faster boot you can just recompile a kernel, remove all the kernel modules that you don't need. For example, I don't have an, an AMD GPU, I don't need the AMD kernel module, so you just remove it. So the first thing we're going to, 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 to do is to get the Linux kernel source. Oh, by the way, this is Debian. We are going to do this on Debian. I, I know there are videos on how to make this on Arts. It's easy on our Arts, but haven't really seen many videos on this on the topic on Debian. So I'm going to maybe be a first. Not sure. Don't quote me on that. So uh, Linux source. I'm running the backported driver, so. I shall choose the latest available. Oh, 6.7 is the latest. All right. Well, we get the source. You can hear me, right? Yeah, you can. We get the we got the source now. We well, the source is available under US source source Linux source six point seven. Yep, that's our source. Now we are going to untar it here in our source directory. Tar extract US source source Linux source six point seven. No, seven here. Give it a moment. There we go. 
Okay, so here's a Linux source. Now to configure it, we have to use a little graphical thing called uh, menu config. Make menu config. Uses an encurs and doesn't have any dependencies apart from encurses itself and a C compiler. Obviously, obviously, you need a C compiler for this. So we don't change anything in here. Only uh, on loadable module support, we're, we're going to disable automatic sign all modules. This is just problems you don't need. And on file systems, we are going to select ext4 to be ingressed in the kernel. That's Yeah, I think star means encrusted. Yeah. And then on device drivers, we're going to look for NVMe. NVMe support. I passed it. Okay. Express rock device, multipath, reverse reporting. Yeah, it's encrusted, alright. We don't need this. We don't need that. Well, maybe this. Oh, well, it's, a, it's a module. Ah, fine. So apparently, it's already yeah, set to be interested. All right. No, we may disable some extra stuff we don't need, like on. Um, Graphic support, we disable. Oh, it's already disabled. Wait, did it? Did it take the running config or something? I'm not sure, but it's already disabled. Fine. So just no, just narc. Ext4 and then VME as encrusted into the kernel, not as modules. That's really it. Uh, yeah. I don't want to touch anything else in case I uh, break something. So we'll just save it. Exit, and then if we cat config Ext4. That's set as encrusted, and then VME is also set as encrusted. Very good. Oh, and if it's stub, important. That's enabled. I think it is by default. So, now we can proceed to build the kernel. And you, I found that I need this little package called Dwar, not du, Dwar, Dwarfs, that's it, that you need for something, not exactly sure what. Just read the manual, you'll find out the, what you need to compile the kernel. And just fuck around and find out, guy. Okay. So we'll make this with all the, the course. I'll pause the recording and come back later. So the kernel finished compiling and in, it ended up uh, being about 20 minutes or so. That's, that's all right. I don't have that much CPU power. It's, it's only a... Uh, Ryzen 7 3700X, I think. After the kernel being built, now we can build the Debian package. We build the Debian package to, well, have it packaged into a, to, for the package manager to know what the hell kernel we're running, to run all the hooks, and to copy all the modules to the respective locations. Uh, it's generally just easier to set up than manually copying everything over. 
And that's done with uh, make uh, dev package or something. Uh, read the wiki, always read the, the wiki. Bin the package, right. Bin the package. No. No way. The package, right. And 16 cores. Oh, god damn it, sorry. Okay, what? Bin the package. Am I reading this right? Okay, whatever, just do it. Oh, right. I'm an idiot. This will relink the kernel or something, and it will compress all the modules and do stuff. Yeah, and compress the kernel. I'll just come back later. So that's finally done. We have <coughs> built a Linux kernel in a Debian package. Oh yeah, well, it's full of shit, isn't it? That's our image. So now we just install it. Well, before, before that, we we install the headers first. Uh, wait, shit. Headers, that's right. We need the headers first to uh, the hook for the DKMS hooks to compile the NVIDIA modules and Linux uh, video for Linux and stuff. Yeah, I'll take some time to I'll just come back when everything is installed. All right, so we finished installing the packages. As you can see, all the DKMS, DKMS modules are compiled. So if we go to, well, find uh, lib modules, grab NVIDIA. We have the NVIDIA module for the mainline, mainline kernel, well, the backported kernel from the package manager, our compiled kernel, 6.7, and the previous attempt, was, which was 6.6. So, in the boot partition, well, boot directory, we've got here our init RMFS, which we don't need at all, and our VM Linux, our kernel. Uh, this is a BCD image with the FE stub, so we can copy this to the EFI partition. There are automated ways of doing that with a hook. Uh, it, it is all documented in the Debian page for FE stub right here. But we are uh, this is just trying, so we we'll just copy it over. So we copy VM Linux 6.7 to boot FE, FE Debian. And that is in fact a BC image. Yeah, file won't let us know that it has the E32 stuff. You just know it works. And also in the documentation we have this little useful command for adding the kernel to the EFI uh, boot manager. Now I have found that for some god unknown reason uh, specifying the root with the UID does not work, it can't find it. Uh, the kernel panics uh, and it tells us the available partitions uh, and for some reason the UID doesn't match but no problem because we, we can just specify the device as such NVMe1 and 1P1 if I remember correctly now the um, kernel is a D EFI DVM BM Linux 
Tac 6.7.12. Right, yeah. That's the name. Label uh, some name. As I have attempted this earlier, I'll put a different one. Now, our EFI partition is not that one is NVMe one and one partition four. Yep. Uh oh, and of course we don't need the initramfs, so we can just remove this. And we could also specify read write to mount root as read write. So we could just uh, we do, by doing this we don't need to specify a root in the f stub. And finally, we should uh, include the mode set option and for the Nvidia kernel, uh, the module. Uh, yeah, it's in boot grab grab that config. Um, Linux, yeah, this thing, and via the error mode set one. So we do that, shit, we sudo that, and now we have Linux uh, 2 as the first uh, boot option. So if we do if I boot manager tag v, we got hard disk for MBR. Yeah, it's a, yeah, I know it's MBR. I know. Uh, uh, Deegan installed in MBR and I didn't change it. Don't want to change it. That's a kernel and the uh, boot options. So now we may reboot and the kernel should boot. So I'm going to record that with the phone and I will slap it in the video for you to see. See you. The phone. Now we'll reboot the computer and it should Shit. boot directly into the kernel from the firmware. Yep, there's the kernel. No grub. And our display manager, yeah, that's it. So after I reboot, we spent 20 whole seconds in the firmware. That's unsolvable. My motherboard is just that slow. We took 800 milliseconds loading the kernel, one whole second booting it, we could probably get this even lower, and then 8 seconds in the user space, yeah, that's that's my fault, but we could probably get this way lower with better hardware perhaps, and maybe a different distro that doesn't have so much system D shenanigans, services and stuff. So I hope you like this, it is a kind of different tone video and it's been a really long time since I've talked to one, so see you in the next one.